And we are live for our special Miyazawa edition of A Screw Loose. So joining us today, we have Tanya Adams from uh, Miyazawa Flutes and uh, the Flute Authority in Coralville, Iowa. And uh, we are A Screw Loose. Uh, we've got Adam Petri of Petri Piccolos in Georgia. We've got Kim Jurens uh, of K. KJW would win repair <laughs> in Canada. That's a lot of words. <laughs> Kim is awesome. Um, <laughs> and we've got Rachel Simon of the Flute Mechanic in Pennsylvania. And we are so thrilled to have Tanya with us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tanya. Yes, thank you all, all four of you for having us. We are, have been super excited about this and I just want to say that I think you guys are providing a really awesome service for the flute community, not only technicians, but really the flute community at large. So um, really, it's really awesome what you guys are doing. So we really appreciate you having us. So. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And I'll, I'll do a you. little mini plug for, for you guys at Flute Authority because I see that you guys are offering a lot of uh, really great resources for people too, which, yeah. you know, the more education, the better. So <laughs> exactly. <Yes>. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really sort of been one, one of the, the bright sides of the whole COVID 2020 thing has been that a lot of places that haven't done stuff in the past are sort of jumping on and going, wait, wait, we, we can do something. So it's great to have mm -hmm. that for sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Tanya, you wanted to just dive in, I think, with a, a slideshow that you had put together to kind of explain that maybe the history of Miyazawa and all of that good stuff. Do you want to in intro it or do you want to just like throw yeah. it up there and jump yeah, in? Yeah, let's, let's jump in. Um, right, we're going to <laughs> talk about um, the history of Miyazawa, how we got involved with the company, and how it's evolved over the years, um, what makes Miyazawa special and unique, and then of course questions. So, excellent. Yeah, let's do it. Everybody see that? It's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> so that is part of our Colors of Sound promo, which we were talking about earlier before we went online. Um, you can go onto the Miyazawa website there's digital posters, there's all the different colors that we still have posters available. So if you really like the marketing, um, that's something that we are able to share, so. It's pretty ground, groundbreaking flute marketing, actually. Like as far as the, mm -hmm. the, the design, I can't think of anything else like it. It's very distinctive. There we go. Yay. So, <laughs> in the way here. So, okay, so the photo you've got on your screen now on the left is Pearl West and on the right is Masashi Miyazawa. So Masashi Miyazawa is the founder of Miyazawa Flutes. Um, he started out his career in the repair service department of an um, instrument manufacturer in Japan. And when they were going to get bought out by another company, he decided to strike out on his own and start flute building. Hmm. And he just had a passion for, thought he could really develop a better product and better flute. So that's how he got started. And then to tell you how we got started, um, it's, it's a pretty big detour, but um, so Pearl West, this guy you're seeing on the screen, he was a flute builder. He was a repair person. He started West Music, which is a, full line music store in 1941 oh, wow. and this year we will be celebrating 80 years so West Music is actually wow. our parent company so we're known by a lot of names we're known by Miyazawa Flutes um, because that was the first flute that we started to import that partnership began in 1977 so wow. that's our longest partner wow. and it's a yep it's a really a true collaboration between the two companies so um, Pearl was was building flutes, kind of realized that he wasn't able to get to the level that he wanted to get to, and so decided to, to reach out and try to find a maker in Japan. Hmm. So in 1976, his son, Steve West, went over to Japan, ended up meeting Mr. Miyazawa. So at the 1977 San Francisco NFA, Pearl and Masashi Miyazawa met for the first time. Wow. So neither one of them 
you know, could speak any English, Japanese. So they were a lot of gesturing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> writing on napkins. And, <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> they just knew it was meant to be. <laughs> So, it, you know, hard That's to cool. be a fly in the room at that time would be pretty yeah. interesting. So. But they just knew that this is this is supposed to be happening. Or like, we have to figure this out. We can't yeah. even talk to yeah. each other. Figure so it out. that's how it all got started. Um, in the early years, they did a lot of collaboration between the two of them. They even collaborated with Albert Cooper on developing the Miyazawa scale. That guy was um, everywhere. Cooper. A few a few versions until they got to the Miyazawa scale that they liked. Hmm. Um, Julius Baker was involved back in that era. Um, and then, you know, of course, over the years it's just been the passion has been for advancing the technology and just what can make Miyazawa special. So, um, so our part in, of it all, so we're of course part of West Music. We're, we were known as Miyazawa Flutes Limited here in the US. Um, and as we started adding different brands to our umbrella, um, we added Hamig Piccolos in the 1980s as the distributor for those. Um, Trevor James flutes, Sankyo flutes, Katato and Fukushima a bass flutes and you know very low flutes. Now we are also doing song joints on Korea. So as we kind of grew it didn't make sense anymore to just be called Miyazawa. Mm -hmm. um, so we also had a lot of our repair customers who would be kind of confused and you know say well you guys are Miyazawa, can I send my brand in here for repair? Can I have my Burkhart Piccolo worked on? Yes, of course, we specialize in professional repair. So um, we changed the name to Fluid Authority, mm -hmm. which I mean, it does still lead to some confusion just because when we go to flute shows, we don't exhibit as Fluid Authority, we want to really, we're there to promote each individual brand and get that brand mm -hmm. identity and presence out there. So right. when I go to a flute show, I'm not Flute Authority, I'm Miyazawa. So mm -hmm. there's still a little bit of confusion, but West Music, Flute Authority, um, Miyazawa, we are all one and the same. So just to, that to clear that up. <laughs> that helps a lot. <laughs> The part that's really impressive about this is that you answer the phone. However, I dial it on my phone, which is very confusing <laughs> to me because if I dial it from the Miyazawa line, it gets picked up as Miyazawa. And if I call it from like the flute authority in my phone, you guys answer it as flute authority. And I'm not sure what magic happens to make that work, but it's, it's impressive as heck every single time. <laughs> Caller ID cam. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Sorcery. Inventions and technology. Shouldn't you answer Welcome to the what 1990s. you want, Kim? <laughs> Shouldn't the correct way to answer it then what do you want, Kim? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, sometimes you can get people who will the same person will email me as our Flute Authority, Trevor James. <laughs> it's important to cover all your bases question four times and so <laughs> <laughs> you're just so approachable <laughs> so yeah Miyazawa um and a lot of similarities between Miyazawa and the West families so Miyazawa is now being the run by a second generation Kazu Miyazawa is now the president since 2010 and um, along the West music side, Steve West was the president. He is very well known in the music industry. He's a former chairperson of NAM, the National Association of Music. Um, I forgot the acronym. <laughs> music. National Association of Music Merchants. Yeah, there we go. Music go. Merchants. Add them to the rescue. All right. um, I used to yeah. be a music business major too, so I get it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so a lot of focus on outreach, advocacy, 
music education. So a lot of that is very important within the West Music um, umbrella. And now the company is being run by Ryan West. So we're in the third generation. Mm. So very, very interesting kind of parallels between the two companies. They're both focused on really kind of a family feeling, you know, hashtag Miyazawa. They want people at their factory to be happy, to be, you know, living a, a happy life. And that's kind of our philosophy as well. So works out really well. Um, and it's really not just a distributorship, but it's been a true partnership over the years. You know, we give a lot of feedback as far as research and development. We are the ones that did the, the website, which is the international website that was done here in Iowa. So, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people just wonder, why is Miyazawa in Iowa? <laughs> so starting with Pearl being a flute builder, that's how it all got started. But even back in that day, there was a lot of things happening in Iowa. There was a publishing company in Oskaloosa. So if you're familiar with band music, you might know about that. Um, Meredith Wilson, there was a lot, just a lot of stuff going on. Um, and a, another interesting thing is that once Pearl decided to stop making flutes, his equipment and tools um, it ended up transitioning over to Lamberson. If you guys have heard of oh, Lamberson yeah. ah, at all, yes. mm -hmm. wow! And then and that transitioned into the McCandless flutes. Oh yeah, and Al McCandless was making flutes all the way up till probably about the early two thousands. Yeah, and just to clarify, this uh, Mr. Pearl West is not anything to do with pearl flutes. No, nothing nope. to do with right, as it is today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, just, totally just to clarify. Because <laughs> I think there's people out there going, wait, wait, that pearl? <laughs> pearl? No. <laughs> well, this flute was called the PL West. So PL West. So if we ever find a PL West that's kind of a, a interesting collector's item yeah. then. And West wins. So Okay. I mean, I feel like I've only seen one or two, so not not very common. I've never even heard of them. That's so Ooh. interesting. Ka Kathy says also Voxman. Also what? Voxman. Oh, Voxman, yeah. Yeah. He was very important in the, yeah. wrote the, the music books that a lot of people use for, like, yeah. all state auditions in and things. <laughs> yeah, I think back, I have so. one on, I think I have one on my music stand. <laughs> yeah, actually. Right. <laughs> That's uh, funny. So here is a photo Aww. of the 20th anniversary celebration. So far left is Steve West. You've got Mr. and Mrs. Miyazawa in the center. Mm -hmm. On the far right is Margaret Kegel, who was Kathy Miller's predecessor. I'm okay. um, the first director of Miyazawa US. Um, so going into the 1980s, Miyazawa started doing a lot of experimentation with different alloys. Uh, the PCM alloy was a really popular one. Um, it was a, a harder alloy, so it provided a really vibrant response. And over the years, it just became too expensive to continue to produce, so it was finally discontinued um, several years ago, but that was a really popular one. The GS, gold silver alloy, was another one that was, mm -hmm. was done a lot. Here's a picture of the factory in about 1979. Mr. Miyazawa is in the front row here. You can see him. 1987, we started doing alto flutes, and I would just a plug out there, if you've never played a Miyazawa alto flute, they are amazing. They are. They are. They are. Agreed. They are <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> They're putting the $20, bar, $20 bills in the jars, guys. They're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they actually sound like, like real flutes all the way up into the third register, which is just shocking for an alto. Yeah. Yeah. And it's easy. Oh, exactly. They're easy to play. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So in 1998, we started using Straubinger pads. We were one of the first manufacturers that actually 
jumped on board with those and really committed to them. So once we just once we figured that that was something we wanted to go with, um, that they actually redesigned completely redesigned the entire mechanism to accommodate Stravinger pads. So changed from the conventional system to a completely flat key cup. Um, it's milled, so it's Hooray. completely flat on the bottom. <laughs> Can we all say thank but you? Like, I mean, it just thank makes you. sense for felt also. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, and the other thing that come, came along with that is that the spud is integrated. So it's, you know, a lot of times on older flutes, the spud can pop off, mm -hmm. the solder can, you know, give out over time. So that piece is actually integrated. So Love that. really very cool. Um, so one reason that. that that was able to happen was because they're using a lot of flute manufacturers make their keys by casting where you're pouring a hot liquid into a mold and that can you know if you have metals that are cooling at different rates that can kind of cause a little bit of instability air bubbles um actually happened with my wedding ring it kept oh, no. every, when i first got it, it i had stones loose every month or so and after about five or six times they finally said, I think we need to get your ring recast. And, you know, since then, no problem. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, personal experience with that one. But um, <laughs> so they actually, um, it's a cold uh, forged key, which uses tons of pressure in order to push the key into the mold at, at a lower, lower temperature instead of heating it up. So, um, I believe Miyazawa is the only instrument manufacturer, at least flute manufacturer, that is doing that. And that just provides a really strong, stable mechanism. So there's such strong keys. It's kind of incredible. And no, so a lucky investment, too. but it was the perfect time to do all that, you know, switching over to Straubinger pads, completely redesigning the mechanism. So it just that all happened all, all at once. Um, I know somebody had asked about the grommet design and that was the, the engineer at Miyazawa who was behind a lot of those designs in, that, in the early 2000s, his name was Mr. Yamamoto. And another cool thing he came up with was the pop out grommet that we have. Mm -hmm. And so of course, most grommets, they, they come out with for their friction fit and they come out by prying and and we all know what a pain that is <laughs> so mm -hmm. the knee is out of the hazardous inner lip mm -hmm. and there's a special tool where you can pop them out so it's obviously better for the technician but it, there's a little piece of education involved yes. for the player because you can't push the plug through or nope. the well, you, you can you can <laughs> yes you can <laughs> no no apparently you for can. my days as a technician yeah, before my days as a technician, because I have a Miyazawa, I made that mistake. And I sent it in to Eric and Chris was on staff back then too. And Chris was the guy I worked with. And he's like, yeah, don't do that. If you like the pads in your flute, don't do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah, very traumatic for the flute player if, you're, if your pad falls out. So that we try to do our best to educate our dealers and customers about that. So, but I think at this point, there's a few other manufacturers who have adopted yes, that. Are. So yeah, they have. because we did I not. I put a slip, I, I put a little slip in all of my clients' instruments if they're getting plugs that mm -hmm. says not to push the plugs through. No. Nope. <laughs> and also Miyazawa yes. has their own plug sizes as well. They're a lower profile so that, you know, the ones that are yes. more commercially mm -hmm. available ones that they kind of sit proud on the key and it makes you just want it to be level and that can lead to extra pushing. Yep, yeah, yeah. The plugs. They're smaller. Yep. Yeah. They fit perfectly. Exactly. Yeah. So 2005 was the next big thing with the broker system. So Yay. the broker <laughs> system of course is all pinless. Yay. Um, we love broker. Yeah. We do love broker. Especially with those <laughs> lovely screws. <laughs> yes, thank you for saving our behind. <laughs> <laughs> they feel nice. They're win-win. They feel nice. They work great. 
yeah. yeah. So for the technicians, of course, it's nice because we don't have to deal with pins. Um, and from a player standpoint, it's just a very light and fast mechanism, very responsive. Um, so I remember one of our artists, Tadeo Coelho, told me that he was practicing Carnal of Venice or something crazy, and he thought he needed practice. Mm -hmm. And then he switched over to his Broger mechanism, mm -hmm. and he was just uh, blown away by, oh, it just works. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we had another story recently of a, a lady who had arthritis, and she was in tears. Aww. She thought she couldn't play anymore. Mm -hmm. She got a Miyazawa Broger system flute and, you know, it, it made all the difference for her. So, um, so it really makes a difference for the player. Um, and the main difference be the, the, between the Miyazawa Broger system and the Brannon Broger Mechanic. Um, so Johan Broger was a Danish flute maker and Brannon started off with the Broger Mechanic it did not have this thumb key that the Broger system has. So over the course of about 20 years, Johan was continuing to adapt and, and change things. And finally, once he had the thumb key and some other design changes, he came to Miyazawa mm. and that partnership got started. So the really cool thing with the thumb key, um, of course, the rod is angled, so it's a longer rod. So on a traditional flute um, thumb key, that smaller lever, it tends to get that lateral play in it over time, just because it's shorter. Um, so it gives a little bit longer um, rod for stability. And then also just the way it's angled, there's enough room underneath it that you can use the same springs that are used throughout the rest of the flute. So, so you have an even feel, you don't have that spring that's rubbing on the body, like, mm -hmm. like the traditional thumb keys. So. Yeah. But the eliminating that rock, that's too short rod and, and the, the wear is like one of my favorite things about that thumb key style. Um, and yeah. It's such a weak point on, on most flutes, and it's so difficult to get rid of um, once it starts to rock. So yep. it's, yep. it's really and nice, a nice solution. It's annoying both the feel of it, but also the inconsistency of the pad coverage as well. That yes. key not being perfectly yep. stable. Yep. And it's kind of in a critical location. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and <laughs> little bit. you know, on the traditional one, um, we had you know, a couple of different fixes for that. We had some larger size um, screw rods. Yep. Mm -hmm. and screws. <laughs> yep. Some larger rods that would, you know, kind of help with that lateral play once that developed because otherwise there's really no way to mm -hmm. completely fix that sometimes. So, right. Yeah. But obviously this kind of takes care of that. So, so that was um, 2005. So long. Feels like recently but here's <laughs> some a uh, photo from our first photo shoot with the broker system so pretty and here we are at nfa in 2005 so here's mr miyazawa johan broger and his wife hmm. um kathy miller this is mr yamamoto who i mentioned earlier Mm -hmm. and Steve West and there's Thomas Broger that's Johan's son so mm -hmm. so that was our launch in 2005 and another fantastic flute photo behind I you know, look at that <laughs> oh I yeah. remember I used to have one of those oh, brochures Elvis. and I just I want that oh. yeah I, I used to have one of those printed hand brochures and I just drooled over it because it's so pretty <laughs> I know I love that brochure that's too sweet. yeah it was beautiful <laughs> yep and we did those photos um, in in house, well, not in house, but in Iowa. Oh. And the the water one, it was in a little bucket. It was actually in the water. <laughs> oh my goodness! This <laughs> is, is that put actually in the fire? <laughs> um, I think there was fire in front and behind, and then Kathy threw some sprinkles, like, of cinnamon at it to make little sparks. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> That's, that's so cool. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that, 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 totally, totally awesome and would give me anxiety. <laughs> so creative. 
We took the pads out, Kim. Yes. So we were <laughs> I was trying to figure off, out guys. exactly how that phone call would have like, gone for me. <laughs> so, so I have a thing that I tried, and I was wondering. <laughs> no. oh. Oh. Awesome. Oh, they're great, though. And then our Gorgeous. newer, newer um, innovation was the MX series head joints. So um, basically over the years, we had the MZ series of head joints and they were just MZ one through 11 and they're nothing really um, consequential about the names other than just the order they were released. But with the MX style, they really wanted to go in a different direction so they spent several years in the research and development phase for these and they had a lot of different flutists involved in the feedback process um ian clark uh matthias ziegler um look up my notes today <laughs> coelho um so and they even consulted a lab at a university for a sound spectrum analysis so just and we got prototype after prototype so it was it was quite a process um, and the way you can tell them apart is there's a different logo so it has kind of a cool little mx on the mm -hmm. on the barrel here on the yeah. tubing and then the crown which you can see better in the next one here this one has a kind of a a cool faceted crown to it so so you know Kim, you had asked if there was anything different in the way they're produced. And it's just, just was kind of in recognition that this was, you know, kind of going in a little bit different direction and how much time they put into the development of Pretty these. Cool. So, so yeah, really, really yeah. just kind of. Is there, a, is there a difference with how the riser is attached or is it? No, but the MZ10 has a halo riser, so that might be the one you're thinking of. Okay, okay. Yep. And I that, love the halo risers. They are awesome. Yeah. And for anybody, player, riser, if, it goes for players that are listening, up. if you haven't tried it, definitely something worth trying. And it's very cool when it's a gold riser, because then you can see the yeah. little bit of gold mm -hmm. all the way around. On the I I have a I have a flute on my desk right now that's a museo in for an overhaul and it has a gold lip but a platinum riser mm. so you see that white halo yep. around there and it's just, that's cool so that's <laughs> <sweet>. <laughs> it's just so it's slick really how cool. smoothly it's pulled off so yep yep very cool um, so 2019 was the 50th anniversary wow. of Miyazawa so here is all the staff at the concert mm -hmm. and some of the staff actually decided to learn flute in Aww. preparation for the 50th anniversary that's so, so cute and they worked so hard and put so much effort into it so it was oh really God. kind of special and just showed the commitment of everyone who works at the factory so and it looks cool. like they don't have any fun there at all <laughs> Kazu Miyazawa in the middle with the purple awesome. tie and Mr. Miyazawa yeah. and is that a Miyazawa contra so how do I get on a waiting list for one of those oh my I don't and I don't how many like houses do I need to sell <laughs> yeah <laughs> or limbs yeah someone had I think it's more than limbs <laughs> Yeah, someone had asked why Miyazawa only does C flutes and alto flutes. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they have kind of dabbled with other things over the years, but really stuck with C flutes and alto flutes as their focus. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they actually do an intermediate level flute now called the MJ, but we don't focus on that here just because we carry the Trevor James flutes. So, mm -hmm. but those are available in Europe and around the world but they're they're not something that we carry so here is the 50th anniversary celebration in tokyo <laughs> the guy. um <laughs> that, that back row is having way too much fun <laughs> yeah ian clark mark growls and let's see this guy is a famous japanese flutist named yanami sakahashi nice and i believe all these and everyone in the picture was a performer. So big party for the 50th anniversary. 
we do have still a 50th anniversary model flute available. So they're wow. very cool. They're, it's a 958 silver. The tone holes are 14 karat gold. Oh, wow. Got um, gold accents throughout, faceted mm. rings. It's got a little logo emblem, kind of commemorative emblem on the barrel. Um, engraved keys. I mean, it's just they're pretty. Gorgeous, they're so. beautiful. They are like <laughs> piece for sure. And didn't you all once do like a, a one that was similar to the Louis Lots shortly before, like that was plated with the soldered tone holes? Those were cool when they were available. Uh, yes. Yep. We did a, a trial run of those. That was that would have been probably few, about early two thousands. Yeah, it was a it was a while back. They were cool. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So if the Canadian dollar gets good, I'm gonna buy the fiftieth. Well, maybe, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe not. But if anybody <laughs> wants one, <laughs> oh, yep. win the lottery. So this is the current staff at the factory in Ijima. Um, that's in Nagano Prefecture. So it's a really mountainous, beautiful area. Um, the last time I, when I visited the Miyazawa factory, it was still in the outskirts of Tokyo. So I have not been to this current factory yet. But. In the mountains, it sounds idyllic. Uh, you know, life goals. <laughs> I want to go to there. They, they also have a little atelier in Tokyo in the Ikibukuro section. So they do repair and then um, flute trials there at the, at the flute shop cool. in Tokyo. So. And here we are at NFA, and obviously there's no NFA 2020, so unfortunately a couple of our staff are new and they are not in this photo yet, but um, you've got some of the Japanese team, the Mizawa West Music team, and even on the far right there you can see Dave Farley squeezed in. Yes. <laughs> he was um, helping us with I was like, I know that person. <laughs> We're <laughs> big fans. Oh, I miss everyone. <laughs> I, I miss everyone. It's so it's yeah, weird. that that's the end of what I have for slides. So I know there's some questions that um, people have written in, and then I'm sure there's been some come up here in the yeah in the chat. So yeah, let's let's do those. All right, let me get us back to. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so all we right. can all see each other. Yeah, we can all see Great each other. Bunch of you. Yay. Um, wow, thank you for that. I, I learned a lot that I did not know. And that was ah, so great. <laughs> I learned a little bit doing this as well. So. That's, see, beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah, so we actually got a bunch of questions and you did answer some of them. Um, so let me see. This is an interesting one. Um, so one of our patrons, actually, Wim, is asking or, or stating, <laughs> I recently bought a Miyazawa <laughs> rose silver flute, um, and I would love to know more about these flutes. Which okay, we, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Rose silver, what is that? The rose silver was an alloy that Miyazawa did. Um, I actually own one myself. Ooh! <laughs> and they were available... Um, they were called either the 502, which would have been similar to a 402 with a plated mechanism, or like the classic Boston Classic or now Vision and Elite. So um, all silver keys with either drawn or soldered tone holes. So those were, that was the three available models. Um, as we got into production, people with certain skin chemistry were, were reacting to the flutes. So anyone that had those flutes, we contacted them and offered to replace them. Mm -hmm. So there are some people that chose to keep them. So, you know, if Wim just bought one, then it was probably someone who either, you know, some flutes that were sold through dealers and if the dealer hadn't kept good records or wasn't unable to get a hold of that person, you know, there was a few people that we just couldn't reach. But um, most of the people, we had some people trade in, some people um, had them plated, silver plated, oh, which cool. actually we, we weren't sure how that would affect the sound, but people were ended up being very happy with that too. So 
Um, we still have a Miyazawa artist, uh, Terry Sanchez, who plays one. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, you know, looks like a, an old flute at this point, but <laughs> just loves the sound so much that. Wow. Now, and I just, I just go with the uh, philosophy of, I play in the National Guard band, so I just play my army flute and then I never play my other flute. So, it's, so it still looks pretty. It just stays nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know a couple of people that have those. Is, yeah. is the rose component, cool. is, it, is it copper? Is that what's mm -hmm. it called? Okay, no. so it would, yeah, turn green and yeah. Yeah. And just they, reactive. Yeah, it, yeah. And it, you know, Darn. you can polish it, but you don't want to keep polishing it because you're just good. Right. <laughs> removing metal as far as you go so yeah um you just kind of got to <laughs> embrace it and yeah. you know pretend you're a saxophone player there you go <laughs> exactly <laughs> awesome i've heard from flutists that they sound amazing i've only heard good things about the the, the acoustics yeah. of them yeah so yep. amazing so i basically have one that's in vintage condition because i just always play my my army <laughs> <laughs> I so rarely get someday. to play my actual flute right now too. I, I play everybody else's and my poor little flute sits in the corner. <laughs> yeah, bonus, right? <laughs> it's, just, it's just like new. It's it's you know very little wear on the mechanism. Exactly. <laughs> Good because it never also gets gets COA'd because you know, cobbler's child. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um so you had kind of touched on this a little bit when you were talking about the MX versus the MZ. Um, we have sort of a, a general question about all flutes. Um, so this is from Erin, who's one of our player patrons, and she's asking why, she's, she's head joint shopping right now, so this is high on her mind. <laughs> so she's asking, <laughs> why are gold head joints made with smaller tubing diameters than silver head joints? So this is kind of across the board. Yeah. Um, and then head joints are very player specific, um, but was there or is there an overall goal that Miyazawa in particular has when developing their head joint cuts? So like, is there something that like Miyazawa is going for that makes it Miyazawa? Great question. Um, so I would say that the denser the metal, um, you know, the more resistance you're going to have. So that's why it's a thinner tubing on gold and that's across the board. So I don't, I don't think that would be unusual for Miyazawa. Um, and as far as what Miyazawa is going for sound wise, we are known for a lot of color in our instruments. So we're not going for that really super dark one dimensional tone. We really want the player to be able to be flexible and get a lot of, I mean, obviously in our marketing, the colors of sound, it's right there. So um, I, missed, I had missed that. <laughs> Um, so we just try to have, I mean, right now there are three current styles, but we just try to have something that's, you know, a really free blowing, a really, you know, middle of the road and maybe a smaller, you know, someone for a more compact air stream or a use less air type player. So, and the same thing goes with, with the different risers and and lip plate options. All that is just different ways that you can play with the amount of resistance you have. So you can do that with, um, Miyazawa offers a heavy wall version of all the flutes all the way down to the 202 model. So you can do regular wall, heavy wall. You could do drawn tone holes or soldered tone holes. Um, even something like adding your C-sharp trill key or E-mechanism. E, um, e that is going to add a little bit of weight and resistance so you know as you add silver you're adding resistance so it's just kind of experimenting and trying to find out what works best for you because it's it's not the same for everybody that's that's why we have so many different options basically yeah awesome that was one of my favorite parts i i did everybody doesn't know um i got to go and visit with you all for a week that was so much fun. Remember before COVID? Um, <laughs> I got to go visit. And one of my favorite things was actually doing head joint testing, which was kind of like a last minute thing and going back and forth and back and forth and getting such different reactions between like myself and it was Siobhan at the time. And Mm -hmm. getting such a different reaction on on what we liked when we were doing like rows and then changing crowns and 
all of the crown voodoo and and stuff like that and it was mm -hmm. so interesting to see how much we would like the sound on somebody else but we wouldn't like it for ourselves and like mm -hmm. how we didn't sound it right. all the same on the same head joint was fascinating to sort of walk mm -hmm. through um because i don't think a lot of players yeah. get to necessarily so that have that sort of like something. educational sort of side of it which was really cool mm -hmm. i'm so glad that i was able to do that what were you gonna say adam adam did you have something yeah yeah sorry i have a delay just because i'm using my cell phone data and a Bluetooth headset. Um, that that kind of touches on something that I really like about what Muzel offers is even as far down, not down, but all the way from the 202 all the way up to the elite, so that you have so many different options at every mm -hmm. single level mm -hmm. that it allows the player to really customize their personal experience. And that was actually one of the reasons yeah. I ended up buying a Muzel back when I was in college. Yeah. It was just because my budget was not huge Mm -hmm. But I was able to meet my personal needs as a player on the budget that I had. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and that's something that even back when I was in Dallas working for Carolyn, that's what made them such strong sellers is that they had so many options at every price point available. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that's something that I think is all really a sort of a, a corner on the market in that regard. Yeah. Um, so yeah, actually, they're just great. We actually had a couple of questions about the different models. So why don't I just sort of yeah. segue into those because it makes sense because we're here, right? So um, yeah, yeah. So um, somebody. <laughs> so we had a couple of questions about uh, the 102 and 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 how it's different from the 202, and then like why does it have a silver barrel in particular? Um, mm -hmm. So do you want to talk about the 102 for a moment? <laughs> and before I forget, I want to say that um, to Adam's point. Also, the mechanism is a, completely the same from the 102 model all the way to the they are. So they are. They are made with the same level of care, the same level of pre yep. precision. Yep. Um, and that's why don't I get the full them. broker until the 602 model, but it's it's all the way down. It's but and that was actually going to be one of my one of my questions for you to clarify. So let's do it right now. So the only <laughs> difference between the partial broker and the full broker now in the current production ones is only that thumb key. Correct. Right. Yep. And, and in previous models, though, it was the left hand was pinned, but the right hand was broker. Is that correct? The other way around. Yeah. The other no, way it's the other, other way around. around. I have the other I way have around. The okay. I have one too. I have the partial. <laughs> I have a partial. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mine is partial. Pinless partial. Left. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, the right hand is only a little partial. Right. <laughs> yeah. So so that's why when when people ask me, you know, what do I recommend in that that price point? I'm always like me is always always at the top of my list because it's like you're getting the most important part of a handmade flute in like such an inexpensive package. Like it's, it's so incredible to me that like, I, I mean, that's as a technician and, and a player, like if you don't have a great mechanism on your flute, it's going to hold you back. And, and it doesn't matter what it's made of. It doesn't matter at that point. I don't yeah. care how much of that flute is plated or platinum. Like right. <laughs> it matters about how that. I like, have good bones. Yeah, it's got. I, I specifically yeah. chose a 202 because I have a, a neck and shoulder injury. And the 202 was lighter than the rest of them. So it let me play. And then I picked a head joint that went with it. And then later a crown because we went crown shopping. But like the mechanism is just as good on the 202 as it is on the 600 series and stuff like that. Like, so, so you're not like compromising. It's just a material difference. Um, so. And that's a question that we get from players and parents when they're flute shopping is, well, why can I get an intermediate flute that's 100% silver for $2,000? But this Miyazawa 202 that's all plated mechanism is whatever it is for $5,000. Right. So yep. um, because they're just manufactured in completely different ways. And it is that, yes. you know, those machine made flutes, they're, they're bending the keys to try to get the pads to seal. And, you know, whereas with the Miyazawa's, it's all made in that same handmade kind of mentality. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that I'm sort of on a personal mission is to be like solid silver does not make a good flute <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> I mean necessarily. I mean it can, but, but that's it, not, it that is it, never. It, 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 
but that's never the deciding factor. Right? Yeah. That's not the reason that it's good. No, that's not, it's the not good because good. of how much silver you have. Exactly. And I feel like we just are, I'm are so sorry that by so many different companies marketing because, you know, whatever reason, mm-hmm. maybe that's the only thing they're doing differently on their, on their nicer flutes, you know, right. but whereas Miyazawa, it's like, they're all nice. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. I, I um, want, I so, want to upgrade, but only because I want the broker's thumb. <laughs> you could just just put that on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Tanya, you really want to toss me one, and I'll just put it on. Wait, go. wait, no. <laughs> um, Don't ask us. So, to do that. so what is what is the difference then between the one hundred two versus the two hundred two? So, the one hundred two is the only model that doesn't have a head joint choice. Mm-hmm. Everything else has a choice of head joint as well as a one year head joint exchange. So. You can get into that. It kind of provides a little bit of security because you can buy that flute as you spend some time and you're getting used to it. If you know, you're know you still not settling in, you can try head joints later. You still have a year to make that final decision. So and we always recommend that's people. Worth yeah, that's worth it. Yeah, that's worth it. I, I, I'm one of the bad horror stories for a dealer about that because I bought my flute through flute specialists. And I asked about trying, I started on MD8 and I asked about trying a different cut three days before my exchange period <laughs> ran out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe try so, not to wait quite that long. It was worth it. <laughs> you needed three hundred. It was worth it though. Three days to decide. Yes. <laughs> well, I just. Now, the- it, <laughs> I was working through problems and we figured out that the riser just was too big and I needed to step down just slightly, but it took that much time of going from literally an Armstrong student flute yeah. to a handmade flute to figure mm-hmm. that out. Yeah, and that's totally. why I was so grateful for that exchange that. policy. I don't advocate other people taking that long, but I benefited <laughs> really, really a lot. <laughs> well, that's a good illustration of why there is a one year you know, exchange. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So don't do what I did, learn faster. <laughs> I'm just a little bit a little thick. <laughs> now the one oh the one oh two has a solid silver head joint or a silver plated head joint? Um well. so the one oh two head joint has silver lip, riser, and barrel. Mm, so right. the actual tube on the head joint is not solid silver. Mm-hmm. And then the other main difference is that it does not have strawberry pads. They're traditional felt pads. Right. Okay. Mm. And you cannot get C sharp trill on the 102. Okay. So it's basically you can do split like split E, you can do D sharp roller, you can do inline offset, but you cannot do C sharp trill. Cool. If right. you can manage to make the difference between it cost wise, it's always better to try to save up a little bit for the 202 because yeah. you get to grow into it. You have a lot more options mm-hmm. long term um, to make that instrument do the best it can for you. Yeah, I mean, that's my, we're, that's we're my 202 sales pitch it. from somebody yeah. who plays one. <laughs> yeah. We're just trying to get you know, a lower price point just for those people that really can't make that jump and just to kind of yeah. get you into it. And, um, and they're really and excellent them, flutes. They're so they are. I have a bunch of clients who play a 102, and it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They it's sound just wonderful. that if, if it, it is one of those ones, though, that you do get a lot of options if you can make the jump. Um, Mm-hmm. But I also have a bunch of people who and have 102 as their backup. And I just put your pads on it, so it's all you hot rotted it. Nice. <laughs> I love hot rotting stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's so great. That's but great. yeah, we always tell people like even just the overhaul with Straubinger pads, is, that in itself is is enough to make up that difference between the 102 and the 202. Yeah. Huge job. Yeah. Not even bringing the head joint choice and solid silver into it, so. Right, right. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for, for clearing that up. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a few more questions and we have about 10 more minutes. So let's see how much we can- uh, Let's do it. Um, yeah so here's like a maybe this is an opinion question or maybe it's like um a company line question i don't know so (laughs) daniel (laughs) Daniel, there yeah one one of our tech (laughs) patrons he he wants to know what is the defining characteristic of miyazawa that sets it apart from other flute makers so this could be either in your opinion or like does the company have like a philosophy like written Mm -hmm. out about this um, I would say the the sound and the complexity of the sound that you were able to make is 
a defining characteristic and then as well as that commitment to quality and excellence technology and innovation that whole thing throughout the line so those two things are you know people always say i love the sound of miyazawa and they say i love the miyazawa mechanism it feels so good the keys feel so nice in my hand so that's i mean definitely what we say but also what gets said back to us as well so excellent um so uh prior to the um Ruger mechanism there was you you were making beautiful flutes <laughs> that had really nice mechanisms um and and so was that the defining factor between when like you had the boston classics switch into the visions did that happen with the mechanism change or is that a, a separate change um so the different main difference between vi um classic boston classic and then vision and elite mm -hmm. so those are the corresponding so it's classic would be drawn tone holes boston classic is soldered okay. and then with the vision and the elite um, the main difference is that it has the 958 silver instead of ser sterling silver mm -hmm. but that model change happened a, a similar time to the broker mechanism so the visions and elites should have the broker mechanism okay i see so it's kind of both of those things gotcha was there a sound concept change as well or it was just more of a like they changed the keys they changed the mechanism they changed the um well i think the 958 silver does make a difference in the sound so okay yeah, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> a little freshening up you know? yeah why well not right <laughs> and like i've always been curious about like why do they call it the boston classic because it's a japanese food company right well that's american <laughs> <laughs> because of course um there it there was and in still some circles still is um a negative perception towards japanese flutes that they aren't made as well which okay. really have, have they met the japanese <laughs> <laughs> okay. this, is, this is clearly so ludicrous. Uh, some kind of weird so bias of people who also live under rocks. <laughs> okay. But it's you know, kind of that same thing with inline and offset yeah. G, like how the you know the flute can be uh, very tradition based and yes. how long yeah. same with the silver is. thing. You know, it's taken a long time for us to move people out of the the inline G thing. Yeah. Just something that won't hurt your hands. Flute, you know, does not mean it's not a professional flute. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess at the end of the day it's just the dedication to sound. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I am so cool. it was kind of I think just at that time, you know, there was that bias towards Miyazawa towards not Miyazawa specifically but, but towards Japanese flute makers so. that makes me sad it does and now uh, hopefully that is starting to go away I think but but the good thing is there's so many flute makers out there that we all have to do our best because right. it's so competitive yes. <laughs> it, is. So it is yeah you can't make a bad flute and expect to have it not come back to haunt you really very true. Can, can I interject crazy. one question that's kind of an important question? Yeah. Um, while we're sort of talking about pads and stuff like that, um, the because I have clients that come from from Japan, and they have client um, Miyazawa's that have felt pads instead of the Starbinger pads mm -hmm. on theirs. Is it is there um, uh, the Starbinger pads mostly for the North American market, or or is it converted completely over now, or how is how does that look? What does that look like? Mostly for the North American market. Um, yeah. I think a little bit in Europe, but yeah, yeah. there's they're still doing traditional felt pads in, yeah. in some parts of the world. Yeah, so. they have a 402 and it has it has felt. We're yeah, still, we're and this, is, this is actually something that comes up every time we talk to a Japanese flute maker. Yes. Right? <laughs> Is that it's kind of why I thought I'd bring it up actually? Yeah, we did I, with the other couple. <laughs> yes, yeah, like the rest of the world, they love their traditional woven felt pads, and yep. over here, it's like, oh, those are for student flutes, <laughs> which is yeah, kind of ridiculous because they're not. I mean, that's how they're used here, but they really. It, it's an interesting bias that's developed, you know. Yep. Um, and I, I wonder if it's a I, I love thing pads. too. It could be. But, like, I mean, but how many different know. climates are there in North America? You know what I mean? I don't think it's a across. Well, the it's currently a rainforest here right now. 
Yeah, it's definitely not that here. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> and it's a, it's nope. something that it's, it's a rainforest area. Yeah. But it's it's an interesting it's an interesting thing that I keep, like I said it keeps coming up you know when we talk with you know people from all over the world and flute makers from all over the world and these different um, perceptions of what what makes a good flute pad and what makes a good flute sound and there is no one right answer mm -hmm. um, and and I, I it's so interesting to me to hear these debates you know online where you see like Strabinger versus gold pads versus felt pad right like can you hear the difference you know and. I am always yeah. like when I hear somebody play their flute and then I get to repair it and I go, oh my God, that's like not what I was expecting to see. <laughs> and it, mm -hmm. it just, yeah, it's, um, it's very, it's a very interesting topic to me um, mm -hmm. that we, we get these preconceived. I've had clients come to me and say, I hate strawberry pads. Oh, I, I just, I don't want them in my flute. And I go, you know that you have strawberry pads in your flute. <laughs> Right, <laughs> and you're like, but I love my flute, and I'm like, yeah. Yes. So yes. So yes. Felt pads are good. Strawberry pads are good. It's just it is Amen. what it is. <laughs> Play what you like, people. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> All right. So Tanya, in your last three minutes with us, is there anything that you want to make sure that the world knows about Miyazawa flutes? Oh, I think we covered it. So. <laughs> we did a good job. We, we, we are always available for questions. So I know Kim is always a good advocate for us on the flute forum <laughs> and telling us just I talk try. to them, just smell them. Just call them. Nice. They really are nice. I did that recently. <laughs> I had they a have full question. display in everything and they're even nice to me and I bother them frequently. <laughs> yeah, and I mean like some of your staff have put up with me since high school. <laughs> I mean, they have to be amazing people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean not only like I've been, I've worked with Eric, but like I've known Lauren since we were in high school together. So, you know, yeah. like y'all are super nice yeah. people. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's great. so great. So. Flute Authority is in Iowa, um, and that is the same as West Music, which is the same as Music. <laughs> it's a very confused people out there. Yep. <laughs> yes, yes. And I actually, this, what, this week, two weeks ago, I had someone looking for a song head joint. And so I, you know, Instagrammed Mr. Song because that was the only way that I knew to get a hold of him. And then I found out that you guys are the dealers for song. Like, I had no idea. <laughs> so, yeah, I learned I learned a lot in the last two weeks myself. <laughs> so it's good um, to learn. Really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you thank so much, you. all of your knowledge and expertise, and and spending it with us here tonight. Um, and I'm sure that people watching this, uh, either now or you know when we put it on YouTube later, um, are also going to learn a lot. Um, yeah. and you'll be back next week for our tech patrons. Right. Which is super great. Um, so technicians out there, if you want to know all about, you know, how those grommets come out and what specific tools you can use and, and how to fit new ones. Tricks That's what I learned those, recently. All the super secret how, how to how to get the broker thumb on and off. That was what I was gonna say. Too many tears. Yeah, that's, Practice. Yeah, that's something I wanna know about because I <laughs> it's actually really to, simple I once you know what I do with it. How to get the <laughs> Alto Flutes G sharp keys back on. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I need to have Many, my flute, like in front of me and be repairing it live. Is what you're <laughs> right. I, I would recommend like pre-recording that one so that you know when it doesn't go as smoothly as you want the first time because th th that is reality. Um, <laughs> you can show that like the super slick install. <laughs> this is how you should be doing it. I don't know what problems you're having. <laughs> I mean, it only took me 20 minutes left, before yeah, I got yeah. this video, so. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, that's great. Uh, <laughs> so we really appreciate you um, both today and next week. It's it, it's mm -hmm. it's such a gift that uh, flute companies like Miyazawa are willing to donate their time and do this education. It's I think it's just been a long time coming, and and it's just really wonderful um, that so many of you are willing to do this with us. Um, I think it's just. It, it's a gift, so we yeah. appreciate it. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. We really appreciate it. Wonderful.
Well, and to everybody who tuned in tonight, thank you so much again for watching us and supporting us and because we couldn't do this if people weren't interested. So uh, every time we see people commenting and liking and, and you know, they're on Facebook with us and then later in the YouTube, it just it kind of reaffirms that like, this is a good thing to be doing. So we appreciate that support. Um, so until next time, uh, we're out. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.